Good evening, comrade subscribers. Hope everyone's well. Bit of a wet day today. Uh, I've had a request to help someone fix their Santaka, Santaka. Uh, they want me to dump the contents of a PLA labeled D14, so I think pro program we call Logic Array. So we've basically got uh, A1 to A16, so we've got 16 inputs and 8 outputs. So I, I guess that they suspect that their, uh, their D14 is not working. And yeah, this is like a custom chip. So if no one else has dumped it, then it's, um, it's unavailable. So there's, um, I guess there's two ways we could try doing this. We could try using um, a logic, logic analyzer. And we could probably get, get all of the signals because, um, so uh, it's Vitaly. Vitaly has asked me to do this. He's pointed out that um, a lot of the outputs are actually routed back to the inputs. So that'll save us, you know, we only need to capture, capture one of them really. Um, so that'll save us, um, so that'll save us some channels. And I think he was saying also that um, a few of these are like, you know, one of them is 7 megahertz, another, another input is um, clock divided by 2. So, that, that'll, so basically with a 16 probe uh, logic analyzer, we could probably capture everything. Let me just zoom out. So I've got my Soleil, if that's how you pronounce it right. So I've got a Soleil, um, quite neat one actually. So it's a, um, uh, it's a 16, 16 channel, um, but the clips, I don't know, I've never found these clips very, very easy to use. They all, they're always coming off the, they're always coming off the the, uh, the legs so I've started doing things like this so um, whacking that on top and then you know hooking hooking this up like that so that's a little bit better uh, but I was, there should be some better way of, of doing, yeah I've, I've tried to find ones which are kind of like this and I've got the you know got the leads already and that way you just whack that on top of the chip but I haven't had any luck. Maybe I need to invent one. Or maybe there's a good reason why they don't make them. <laughs> I don't know. So that's one method. The other method is um, pulling the chip out and uh, using Arduino basically as a, as a ROM dumper. Um, basically toggle all 16 inputs from 0000 to FFFF and then capture the... Um, capture the output. So I'm kind of leaning towards that because it means I don't have to use the whole 16 of those bloody probes. So the first thing we've got to do is, um, I don't think I've got the right video cable. This is back when I wasn't labeling cables, so I don't know. I've got the original uh, power supply here that I've refurbished. So this is the Santaka's power supply here. They, uh, well you can't see it, but an Aussie plug and I've put on a nice nice DIN connector there. So obviously first thing we want to do is uh, make sure it still works. I have tried it. Problem is, like I said, I think it's the wrong cable because I think the sink is wrong. But we are getting an image. It is working. So that's good enough for me and I can... Let's, let's have a... Let, let me prove it. So, nice thunk. Power on. And... Yeah, it's not. It was <laughs> was showing something, but you can hear you can hear the little speaker. So the machine is working, and every now and again, <laughs> hello. Once the sink decides, well, <laughs> randomly sinks, it does come up with a it does come up with an image. Okay, maybe I need to make the cable, but I, I did see it before. It was working. It's definitely working. So. Um, Let's uh, let's open it up. All right. So it's it's been a while since I've I've actually worked on the machine. So I guess the majority of my subscribers. Well, having said that, I've got 1,766 subscribers as of now, and I'm lucky if a video gets more than 200 views. But hey, I don't care. As long as everyone's happy. But 
Yeah, so it's been a while. So I definitely, I think, last time I looked at this, it was definitely before I had a 1,000 subscribers. So this is Santaka. So it's kind of a joint Lithuanian-Belarusian uh, machine. So you can see here we've got a 9209. So what's that for in March? March 1992. So I think it was built in an ex-weapons factory or something because it is, it is a solid... It is really yeah it is like the rolls royce of of spectrums i think uh interesting expansion connectors you can see there quite a few pins and um you've got the usual din connectors here for cassette and everything rgb out um i was actually quite lucky it came with this uh this is the joystick interface joysticker um as you can see edge connected to to the din um, socket which is what the soviets used for their uh, joystickers or manual manipulators as they are also called so that goes into the back there like so and now you can hook up a joystick you even got a little serial number on it anyway let's open her up and have a look for this d14 pla to see what it is and if I'm going to be able to get it out without um, causing problems. Okay, I think there might be a broken... No, maybe it's not broken. Uh, you can see I've been in here. Um, I wonder if I've covered up D14. Try and find it. Where are you, D14? I think these were the ones that were generating the most heat. As you can see, nothing is oops, nothing is uh, socketed. Unfortunately, everything is soldered in, but everything's labelled. There we go. There's D14 up there. And of course, I've put a bloody heatsink on it. What am I going to do that for? Should have known. I should have. I'd need to pull it out one day. Okay, so, ah, oh, God, I remember this. It was almost impossible to get this damn PCB out. Or was it this one here? One of these, it was almost effing impossible. Um, so we've got, we've got plastic clips, plastic clips. Well, let me zoom out a bit, sorry. So we've got plastic clips there holding it in, plastic clips there holding it in. And it should lift up. Oh, and yeah, it's connected to the bloody video out as well. I've redone these wires because they were, um, well, they were all the same. And this was when I was trying to figure out what the, uh, what the RGB pinout was. So I have color coded them now. Um, RGB and sync, I think, and ground. And I think that might be composite, perhaps. And that's obviously 5 volts. So that's the fellow there. I don't know what type of chip it is. Um, but let's see if I can get... I'm going to have to get both boards out if I'm going to desolder this fellow. Um, looking at the board, some boards are lower quality than others. This one I'm hoping might be okay. Now the closer to get this board out. So that's that's the fellow there that I've covered up. <laughs> to get this board out, I'm gonna have to undo well kind of press these plastic. There's one in each corner. Over there, over there. I th oh that was the thing there. Oops, sorry. So you've got to kind of slide it out, I think. Yeah, slide it out. Looks like it there. So there's there's some room to slide in conjunction with the video. This so this is the video board here. Was there some difficulty? So because obviously it's all connected here. I could you know desolder these if I wanted to. I might actually I might desolder them. It might be easier. All right, um, unfortunately keyboard is connected, so I can't disconnect the keyboard. But um, one thing at a time. Video evidence, I remember 
what's connected to what. I'm going to desolder those. So it is quite a nice board, isn't it? It's quite, yeah, it's a shame none of it was, so, it's the shame they didn't um, yeah, sock it then. So quite a few ROMs. I guess they're 2K ROMs. Um, yeah. Anyway, nice big beefy speaker. I'm just waiting for the soldering iron to heat up. And we'll have a crack at getting this out. I remember now. I think it was oh, these, this thing here, because you've got to, so I've got the, I've got the back up, that was easy, right, that's, that's easy, but, to, and obviously I need to slide it back because of this here, so I need to slide it back, but to be able to slide it back, I need to get it over, over that, um, so maybe that's where I need to, they make it easy, couldn't they just use screws? I just use screws to do this. But I, I'm going to have to put the camera down. I'm going to do this one-handed. I'm going to break something. I don't know. All right, I'll film this, but I don't know how well it will go. So I've got, I've got that up. Let's stick something under there. Oh, I've got another one of these. All right. So... one at either side Oops. oh okay that's come up all right I just need to do this side here without putting my big big chunky arms in front of the camera. And can I lift that up? There is probably some way in the manual that says, oh, to remove the board, just do this. Okay. Just using the logic analyzer to start to sound really appealing now. So I still need to get it over this. I don't know what I'm recording at the moment. Just need to get it over the over that bit there. Need to um, that's the reset switch. I don't know if the reset switch is causing any problems. It doesn't seem to be at the moment. Just a little bit more. It's gonna get kind of under that. What have I got here? No, not that one. Maybe that one. Maybe. There we go. That did the trick. <laughs> okay, now, why isn't it magically coming out? I've still got that thing at the back there there we go all right a little bit more of that oh okay i think that's the first time i've had the board out i don't remember i don't know I have to check my other videos i don't know all right so what i'm going to do is remove the heat sink so i can see what type of chip it was because it's not actually well, there usually is a um a list of all the parts but I didn't see it with this Santaka documentation so and it's not listed on here it's just x slash y so it'll be interesting to know what type of chip it is so I'll remove that get the 
this out of the way. Oops, screw came out. There we go. Right. I should now put a label here, actually. Brett was here. So the chip I want to desolder is this one up here. Um, yeah. I'm a bit dubious. I'll have a go at a couple couple of pins and if one or two of the pins come out alright because the other thing I was, I was thinking of doing is just trying it in circuit obviously I can't do it in circuit with a big bloody heat sink on it but um, where was my logic because the thing is I was going to use an Arduino just to do it probably a mega so it's got enough enough uh, pins so something like that so what have I got? And it's kind of like angled in a bit so that it kind of snugly fits on top of the chip. And then I can just connect to all these and then obviously power the chip. I know there's obviously, there might be other, oh, whatever. Hey, it's worth a try, you know, that's why I'm doing it. It's just to see if it works. If it doesn't work, then I'll try something else. I've learned a lesson. Don't learn, don't learn nothing by doing nothing. Okay, I think actually it's dinner time, so time for a break. Okay, there's the fellow. A KR556RT1 uh, programmable logic array. So apparently it's got 16 by 48 uh, product terms, which is AND and 8 OR terms or something. And it's 28 pins, so... I had a look at the data sheet, so pretty much there's a programming pin or something. So pin 1 and pin 19 I tie to ground. Uh, so it's 28 pins, so pin 14 I think is ground. And pin 28 is the tension of the listening. Naprogenia um, litania. So it's the tension of the listening is pin 28. So that's I need to connect that to the um, to the listening uh, rail. So yeah, there'd be five volts um, up here. So five volts there, ground there, one and 19 also to ground, and then everything else. So I've got my Freetronics Ether Mega, and hopefully I've got enough. I should have enough. Um, we should have enough inputs and outputs to um, to dump this thing. Let's see. Okay, so my idea is just to use a um, good socket. So I think, just wondering, it might be, I'm assuming it's going to be Soviet 2.5 mil offset, so I'm going to have to be a bit careful with it. But the idea is that I can kind of force this on top I'm just doing this for demonstration. I'm going to actually do it without the camera. It'll be easier, I think. But um, so it's just so we had to force it down, so it kind of sits there nicely. I think like so. Okay, and then now if I was going to use my logic analyzer then I can just um, basically break these up and stick those in there and then attach the clips to it. But as I'm going to try and use my Arduino, then I can basically kind of hopefully you go like that across to the Arduino, like so. So let me get all that set up. So I did, uh, someone, oh, sorry, I did... Um, Obviously, I, don't, I used to do Arduino all the time before I did um, YouTube, and I'm a bit rusty now. But I have, um, someone has got a sample um, sketch where they uh, dump a ROM, and this is essentially what we're doing. It's, well, it's, it's not a ROM, um, it's a PLA, 
but essentially we, we want to do the same sort of thing, put in a whole lot of inputs and get out some outputs. So let's see if I can get that working in circuit. Otherwise, try and desolder it. So I think I've just about finished modifying the Arduino sketch. This is the one I'm going to use. So like I said, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. So da -da -da. that's that. Okay, so where was the sketch? The sketch was... Hmm. There. All right, so basically... Um, I've just, um, yeah, so we've got address pins A1 to A16 as outputs, and then we've got it um, output pins uh, Y1, oh, it should all be Ys. It's, I'm just using the, the naming on the diagram. So Y1 to Y8, and we, um, we set up all the outputs as outputs. Surprise, surprise. Set up all the inputs as inputs. Then we start serial so we can log everything. And this is where we basically pulse each address um, for all 16 bits. And then we, um, we read what the output is. That's basically it. So like I said, um, this is the, I've just modified it. So odd bloke, well, I'll put the, uh, as always, I'll always put the link in the video description where I found it and I've, uh, I've just modified it to hopefully uh, dump a Soviet KR556RT1 PLA. Um, but the way this works is it basically is, is for dumping a ROM. So it's going to print the, um, for each byte it gets out, it's going to print it in ASCII as well, you know, in case there's text. Obviously that's not going to be in our case, but I'm just going to wire it up and give it a quick run just to see if it works. And then I'll, um, I'll modify the actual output stuff here for something um more in keeping with what we want okay there we go we're all hooked up to the arduino uh <laughs> i'm sure this is going to work <laughs> what could possibly go wrong <laughs> apart from my little arduino because it's supplying five volts to the chip apart from my little arduino uh trying to supply power to the whole thing um yeah, I was wondering if I should maybe uh, disconnect, dis um, see if I can desolder the um, the VCC, the 28 pin, so that we don't try and power the whole board, or just maybe even um, cut it for now, just to isolate it. But let's see. So the um, the script, the uh, the sketch compiles. So now upload it and um, see what it does. Yeah, so <laughs> you can see when I uh, connected <laughs> connected the power up, the, uh, the little LEDs just died. <laughs> so I kind of thought that might happen. So what do we need on here? It's only connected on, on the underside, thank God. So I think it's, it's this one here, pin 28, and it's connected to decoupling capacitor right beside it. So it should be just a matter of just cutting that track there because it's on the other side with the decoupling capacitor that it's actually connected to the 5 volt rail. So that should be enough there. So let's give that a try. Second thoughts, I just realised that probably the simplest way to replace one of these PLAs if you don't know the original... Um, logic equations is just to stick a ROM in there, uh, assuming the ROM you know, is, is fast enough. So actually the output you do want is basically like a ROM. Now I think I need to adjust this because I think it was going to probably stop at uh, 16K, wasn't it? But we need it to go all the way up to 64K. All right, so for address zero less than 16, yeah, so I need to change this so it goes uh, and then address plus equals 16, so read 16 bytes. Okay, so yeah, that's the output it's getting. Yeah. 
stick that over there. Uh, and then ultimately, yeah, you want to obviously convert this ASCII to um, to a binary file. You can get rid of this. I don't need these this output here actually either. Do I just want this pure? All right. So uh, was it six five five three four? Dun, 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 dun. Six five five three four. I think it is. Uh, blah blah blah. Now we print each byte in hex, which is what we want, and print an ASCII dump two. We don't want that. Uh, space or print line. So if I just uh, comment this out for now, I'll zoom in so you can see the exciting things I'm doing rather than capturing the screen again. Um, let's go down here. And I like the way this this original guy has actually written the code. Um, I think I suspect that he learnt Pascal <laughs> before he learnt C. So you've got your open curly braces here, and then you got uh, rather than having them. Oh, I can't stand when they stick them up up here like uh, like this. Oh, does my head in. Um, I. I was self self taught basic on the home computer, and I think for probably the first programming language I learnt was high school was pascal and i think this was this was the way you did it in pascal you know and so that's the way i always do it i can't stand the way they do it in c i can see programmers right um serial print line well we don't need that but anyway let and let's speed it up while true delay 1000 so let's speed it up we want what speed could we do this we could do 11 how fast can we go on the Two million board. Oh, okay, no, eleven, one one five two hundred. Let's do that. One one five two hundred. One one five two hundred. Okay. Let's save that. Let's upload it. Okay, and then let's open the ser oh the serial monitor is we need to clear the output we need to change to 11250 clear the output and we're going to auto scroll and we want to uh, but, but, but we need to restart that don't we i should actually be saving this too so yeah, so we're on a uh, arduino I should actually, yeah, I don't know if it's going to... All right, let me finish this off. So there we go. I think that's kind of um, working. Obviously, it's not the final thing, because the final thing is we'd want to save this as a, as a binary file, but I can, I'll can i do that later. I think the main thing is to get this over to the fellow and see if it's any dec if it's any good for him or what format he needs it in. Hopefully that was of some interest. Um yeah, what time is it now? Come up to 10 p.m. Let me quickly edit this, upload it, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye for now.